uh, we are going to discuss regarding the input output pins in Arduino that we call it GPIO. And today we are going to learn how to have the input and output for Arduino pins. We call this general purpose input output or GPIO, which the act of this pin is that they should be in input or output. Some example for input can be some sensor data or some switch space. And for output can be motor running or LED brightness or something like that. And then this pin, I mean the same pin, can be uh, configured as input or output and it's important to note that majority of Arduino analog pins may be configured and used in exactly the same manner as the digital pins. Here I show you the number of pins, I mean digital pins, which are started from pin number zero to pin number 13. And uh, here you can see uh, the pins. Even Pin number zero and pin number one will use for serial communication that later we will discuss further. Uh, the next slide, uh, uh, I'll show you that we have three uh, options or three ways to define the pins. One is input, one is output, it's clear. But what concept that we have, we call it pull up or input pull up. That little bit we will talk now, but later we will discuss more about uh, uh, this input pull up and we will see how it should act uh, in next lectures. If I want to configure my pins, there is very simple syntax that we call it pin mode and format is like that. Pin mode, pin number, and mode. In this uh, syntax, pin number is showing the pins that uh, we want to uh, configure and And mode is that selection between input, output, and input pull-up. Okay. Very simple example I show I written here: pin mode three and output. It means that the pin digital number three I want to configure as output. But please remember one point: which if I want to put any pin as output. I should remember that the current that I can sync from that pin is uh, up to 40 milliampere, which is sufficient to drive the LED LCD display. But if I want to run motors or relay, it's not enough. And remember that while connecting the device to Arduino output pins, when we use the resistor, if uh, any connected device to Arduino we throw the current more than 40 milliampere from the Arduino, then it will damage our Arduino board. Then please remember the output current that you want to use from your Arduino board is limited and it's up to 40 milliampere. Okay. Uh, let us see. If I want to configure it as the input pin, how I will do? Very simple. The statement or syntax is pin mode, digital pin number, and mode means that input. In example that I written here, I show the pin number three, which is indicated as the input for us. Then what uh, we can do, uh, we can connect some switch or something like that to that but really putting the input like that it's not good for us because generally it will have the noise 
And if the pin is not connected proper, or if the pin is live uh, without any wire, you have the noise for that. We should think how to solve this problem. One of the main way is using the pull-up resistor. In pull-up resistor, which we are using to stir an input pin to known state, and if no input is present. This work uh, will be done by adding some resistor to five volts, which people will call it pull up, or we can do it as pull down, means that the resistor should connect to the ground on our input. And generally, one 10K resistor will use as pull up or pull down. Uh, using the built-in pull-up resistors also we have, and we have 20,000 pull-up resistor, which is built into the Atmega chip, which can be accessed from software. And these built-in pull-up resistor are accessed by setting the pin mode as input pin. These uh, effectively invert the behavior of uh, input mode and uh, where high means sensor off and low means uh, sensor on. We will talk more regarding this. And I want that you notice that always these pins should not be 10K. For some guaranteed uh, AVR boards, it's 20 to 50. Suppose for Dewey Arduino board, it's between 50 to 150K. That you should uh, see the data sheets of our catalog for your Arduino board. Um, please remember that when you connecting the sensors to pin configured as input pull up, the other end should be connected to the ground. And in the case of simple switch, this causes the pins to read the high when switch is open and low when switch is pressed. Then the pull up resistor provide enough currents to light an LED dimly connected to the pin configured as an input. If LED in the project seem be, seems to be working, but very dimly, this uh, likely what is going on, the same registers uh, to control whether pin is high or low. Then please remember, using this pull-up resistor, you should think for the value of the uh, resistor and then put it there. It's very simple. You should just use the statement like pin number and then input pull up. Then you will set the pin to input using the pull up resistor. Uh, it's very um, usually, or it will use more in uh, when we are using the key or switch uh, as the inputs of our Arduino. Okay, what should I do if I want to configure my pin as output? It's also very simple. A statement is like this, pin mode, pin number, and the mode which is output. That means they can provide the amount of current to other output, which already I tell you that this pin can give you 40 milliamperes as the output. Okay. Till now, what we learned, we learned that how we can configure our uh, pins as input or output, and then uh, or uh, pull up in input pull up. And then now, suppose if I want to turn on and off, or I want to write some value, make high and low to one specific pin, what should I do? Which is the function of digital write will do that job. This command is used to write the status of our digital pins and can make them either high or low. And the pin needs to be output pins. The digital write function, as I written here, can have two value of high or low as zero and one. And uh, it's related to the board. The high should be five volt or can be 3.3. Okay, uh, please um, remember that it's recommended to uh, put the pins mode to pull up, 
to enable the in internal resistors, then we don't have any uh, noise from entry of our boards. Okay, here in the yellow part, I show you the um, syntax, which uh, how we can write the value to our digital pin. Suppose if I want to make high, just I will change the value here to high or low, and pin is the number for that. For example, digital pin eight high means that I will turn on my digital pin eight uh, and give it the value one or five volts. Okay. Uh, let us see one example. Suppose uh, we call this example as the blink example which is already we have in our Arduino board example and uh, in that pin digital number 13 will turn on and off periodically okay let us analyze this program as we discussed in Arduino board we have two parts one is void and a void setup and another one is void loop in void setup we just arrange the setting or configuration which should be do once in our program. I mean, in pin mode, suppose LED button in, which is number 13, we put it as output and we just configure it one time. And then in the loop, if you see, we have digital write pin number and high. It means that I will turn it on. And then I call one delay function, which will wait for a second, 1000 millisecond, it's become one second. And then again, we will turn it low. Okay, and again, we will wait for a second. And then we get here in the figure, I show how this uh, uh, LED is turned on and off. You can see here. Uh, in the figure that I show for you. We call this example as the blink example. Uh, now you will see the LED is turned on and off. And then uh, it's exactly like what uh, we can have after uh, working with this example. Okay, till now, this is the first part of our talk. Just, I will stop to continue for the next part. Uh, uh, what we need uh, is that we need some tool which help us to have the same environment as the real one, which we call it simulator. Then we talk uh, some uh, point regarding the simulator and some example that how we should. One of the famous simulator that people are use is a simulator which people will call it Protoos. I know that some of you are familiar with that. Anyway, I put some clips before, clips number is number five, which uh, will show you how to connect, uh, or uh, sorry, how to install your Protoos uh, software and how to use it. Anyway, before that, let me tell you very brief, some critical uh, part in our Arduino ID. After that, we will come back and speak regarding the simulator. As uh, all of you uh, install the ID in your Arduino board, you will see that we have six unique buttons which they are written here, I sort them like this. The first one, we call it as the verification key, which will help us after writing the code, it will show us how many error we have and, uh, or we don't have an error. We will be sure that the uh, text that I put or the program that we are written there, it's correct. The second one is for uploading the, your program into the 
uh, board. It has the arrow and refer to burning the program as the uploading sketch onto the board. Third one we'll use to create the new sketch. Fourth one is used to open an existing sketch or built in example. Fifth one is used to save the current stage. And last one is used for serial monitoring that we will see later um, about this work. Please have a look to this table. Um, now, if we have selected the appropriate board for our Arduino board, and communication port that we call it com port and programmer we need to upload suppose some example like this and we can either verify the sketch with the help of the key that we have and after that we can use the uh, after that we can use the this key to upload it into our board. It's very simple to do. First, uh, you should go for the file and then select the board name and com port, which I show you in uh, last uh, practical part. Please have a look to that. But the output of that program is like this, which we already discussed. Maybe some of you wants to know that after making the Arduino board code, what should be the extension of our file? Here in some slides, I will discuss regarding the extension of our Arduino IDE board. When we create any sketch or program, some extension will be generated for us uh, with our source code file, which each of them has the, some particular use. Suppose INO is the make main extension which is used for uh, our sketch file. And your primary sketch file should be in dot INO format file. You can create some additional INO file in your sketch, which we can uh, name however you like. And before completion, all additional INO files are appended to primary sketch file. There are copied in accessing order based on the file name and all are run through the standard process of uh, gathering include and generating profile. Then the first file which we will generate is INO. The next part is PDE.H, CPP and .C. Remember, when you are doing the coding, no need for all of you to remember them. Or you cannot see them, but you should have some information regarding this file, which I try uh, to give you some data regarding it. Suppose .pde is the default extension of a sketch, which written for IDE prior to release of one point uh, version of uh, one point zero, and if you use the uh, latest version of 1.0 or greater, you should rename them uh, to .ino. Means that .pde, if your IDE is updated, now it's not working. Also, always you should keep your IDE update. Next is .h, which is a header file or file with uh, extension. It can be utilized in the number of ways. If your sketch use the set of constant that multiply that CPP or dot INO files may use, you can create the single location for your common variables and function. Dot CPP is the another uh, extension of your file, which is generally for C++ source file. And sometimes the sketch become quite large and you can utilize the that .cpp file to separate the section of your, your codes. But this allow you, allow your sketch to include the header 
and its functionality. And also it's an important point is that your .cpp file do not go through the IDE pre-completion modification and therefore have no prototypes generated. For more information of this, you can see some breaking stage and some files like that. And last part is .c file. And if you watch, wish to uh, write the C code, you can, and using with Arduino, you can have this extension instead of .cpp file and use .c. This is a right, uh, I put for, because some last uh, semester, a student asked me, what is the extension which will be generated by IDE part? And these are, uh, as I mentioned for you, then remember that uh, just that INO is okay for you and you can use that very simply, okay? Let's go for our main talk, uh, which is the simulator. and. Uh, let us see how many simulator we have for Arduino. I remember last semester when I searched on net, I read that there is 16 different uh, simulator that you can use for your Arduino board. And, but first of all, we should know why we need this simulator. You know that simulator is a device or software that can simulate the certain function of another system, but does not claim to create an exact copy. And this is uh, some kind of virtual environment in which we simply can model another system with that big set. Arduino simulator is not any different. Sir. And a good Arduino simulator program can read understand, interpret the Arduino ID based on program without needing any physical Arduino board. Uh, Real-time event modeling also is the basic of many industries today. And over the year, uh, some large scale simulation process have been used an area of study. And today Arduino simulators allow all uh, professional people and beginner people to learn and uh, work with Arduino simulator. In our course, we also using the Arduino simulator, two of them, not just one, and we will learn how to simulate our program with them. Uh, Okay, but what is the advantage for that? The main advantage of uh, this simulator is that the designer and programmer can understand that they have any problem in their program or no, and also they can save lots of memory and money and time uh, from your side, then no need to purchase all the hardware, some of the hardware which you have in your concern uh, simulator, you can use them and enjoy. But the great advantage of Arduino simulator is that they can debug your program line by line. Then the user will can understand that which line and where they have problem sort the program and when that was okay on simulator then they go and load on the real hardware part these are the list and link which you can take the number of Arduino simulator which uh, i found recently on the uh, web page suppose power uh, sim doing no Arduino sim, Arduino simulator for PC, emulate, simulator for Arduino, Yenka, Autodesk, LT Spice, PSK, PS Spice, Circuit Labs, ED, ED, uh, Easy EDA, and Circuit Cloud, 
system vision, protos from lab center, and virtual. You will see that there is the long list, even day by day, it's increased, and lots, lots of simulator will add, but two of them are more important and more famous, which we can use them, and they will help us to do this simulation well. As already I tell you that simulator, uh, which we call it Protos, is one of the famous ones, which uh, people in order and also they will use it, and they call it SIS design environment, which helps embedded system developer from some painful electronic verification of the circuits. It's become the first choice of most of the electrical electronic and electrical engineer nowadays. And so many people will use it. In uh, this section, we just thought regarding the how we can do the simulation with the board Ono and Protos board. Even I put one special clips for you, clips number five, I think, on the mock system, please see that clips and follow the steps that I have done there. Suppose we want to do the same example that today we discussed, I mean the blink LED part. In blink LED part, what we need? We need one Arduino board, resistor, and uh, also LED, okay? Let us see how we should do that. Um, you know, in Arduino board, uh, before starting the simulation, we should go to this route, means file and preference. And uh, completion we should mark, means that this part you should mark in your Arduino IDE. Because this is, is the hex file, which we later we are going to enter in our Protoos board, okay? Then the first step is that we should put this tick or this mark and then go for the next one. Um, as I told you, Protoos is a software where we run our simulation. And the first, make sure that you should have the Protoos we should install in your system. That in the last uh, lecture, I request you that please install the Protoos on your system and uh, check which is working and that be sure that it's fully installed. Then after running that software, if you don't find Arduino in the library, you should download it download the library from this link. I'm going to share that in our lecture group, this uh, file I have, and I will share for you. You can put it and use it in your Protoos board. Then in most of the computer, location of Protoos is C drive, program files, lab center, like that. Then you can just paste that library there, and after that, you will see that your Arduino is working. It's very simple. Means that from the library, you can find your Arduino board, Arduino Uno, and then put it in your page. It can be as the step two. But how we should write the program? As we say that, you can go to the file, preference and completion like this, put the checkbox. And after that, run the IDE. Uh, ID. Suppose we want the blink example. You can easily take it from file, example, and basic. Then you can take that program and do the verification. Then make the hex file and make it ready. Now we will come back into our Proteus uh, simulator. Then we will open it, then we will go to uh, components mode and click on the P. Then we will select the Arduino boards. And based on that, we need some resistor that we can easily take and put it there. After that, 
just click on to the board and load the hex file we generated from your Arduino IDE. You can put it there and put the OK. And after that, you will see that after putting the OK there, you will see that your uh, simulation is finished and your LED can glue that. Let us see this um, movie on a uh, I put this movie for you, but here you can see it once more. Now, as you can see, it's going to open uh, the library part of the Protoos. And by that, it can uh, select or put some keyword of uh, Arduino, suppose it wants the arduino uno it can just type the arduino and we can select suppose arduino uno or any any type of that we'll select and put the okay very simple uh, we are searching for r3 version then simply we can select it and then put it into our uh, what we can say into our uh, page. But the problem was here that the library was not installed. Then again, I go here, uh, open the Protoos library for the Arduino, copy that, and then I'm going to paste it in the location of uh, Protoos, which is uh, C program files or user, then uh, I did then for you. Um, C, user, no, program files, lab centers here, as you see, lab center electronics. And then I will select my Protoos version number seven, and then into the library, just paste here. Paste, yes. It will paste there. Then again, here I will open the Protoos, put the name of Arduino Uno, yes, it's come. And then what I will do, just uh, going to add one resistor to pin number 30. After that, I'm going to add one LED, and then connect these together and put the ground. You can follow this movie on Moch. I put it there. Okay. Next part is that I should load the program inside my uh, Arduino, uh, which already I have the um, hex file or something like that. Now I change the value of uh, resistor. It can be 1K or 20, there is no difference. Then in ID, as you see in the file, example, basic, I can select the blink. First verify it, and then hex file will be generated. But before that, as I tell you, I will go to the file, preference, and then put that completion. As you will see here, I put that mark. Great, simple. Then do OK. Yes, as you see here, there was uh, not any problem or any error for my codes. Then simply I can uh, do the jobs and uh, continue my job, as you will see. Now I will double click on that 
and based on that, I'm going to load the dot hex file uh, inside my Arduino board, as you will see. I put the program, okay. And now we will run the produce. If we run the produce, that LED should turn on and off as it's written here. Okay, nice. Then what we have done, we learn how to simulate the blink program here. Okay, this is your task number three that you should simulate the blink program with produce and send the program plus simulation in PPT format. This is task number three, okay? Now, let's continue for the next simulator, which is more important. The Proteus, I give you full text, everything, how to do the step. But for another simulator, Arduino, I will not give you the much more uh, text, just I share the video with you that you can take it from practice number S06. And from that, you can learn how to work. Okay, let us see how, what is this simulator. This is another simulator, which is free and fullest feature Arduino. I can tell you specifically it's made for Arduino board and it has lots of benefits, which is has the ability to teach, to teach and demonstrate the inner working of Arduino sketch, test or your sketch, debug your sketch, everything can be here. It means you will not uh, use the ID is separate. You can write your code here. From the link that I put here, you easily you can download the, uh, the, um, this uh, simulator. I also will try to give you the source code in the group easily you can download and work with that. How it will work? It has the environment like this, that after entering your code, you can edit or work. Suppose we are working on Ono board, you will see the exact hardware part of Ono there. Uh, this simulator has different parts, as I written in the table, which you have one task to complete that. Suppose uh, in the file you have load a sketch, you have edit, you have recent sketch, close, print, like that. You have run, view, hardware, tools, trace, option, helps, which we will talk regarding that. It's, I tell you, one of the fantastic simulator and recent one. No need to add any library, no need to install any library, but it has some limited time to use. I think around one month, which is good for you to work with that. And it's enough till our exam time. See, if I want suppose to do the blink example in this, it's very simple. First, I will use the load and then select my blink INO. And then after that, I, I should select it from file, file part. And then we will see, suppose, in the run part, I have hard reset. I have stop into, stop over, step out, run, and other. Uh, uh, parts, as you will see here. And suppose for the view section, we have input, output, EEPROM, call stack, like that. Hardware part, you can have different uh, type of Arduino board as Ono, Dewey, Lilypad, Mega, and you can do lots of simulation with this nice simulator. If you want to see the ASCII table, you can take it from tools, calculator, like that. From trace, you can uh, check your board, and also uh, from the option, you have variety and some job to do. Okay, now let us see. If I want to do the Blink programming there, you can load the program first and then show the used variable here. And after that, check your program and check all the registration uh, coding which you had. 